In this video I'm going to show you how to add Simply Postcode Lookup software so you can look up any addresses in virtually any Windows or DOS application. In these examples I'm going to use Microsoft Access just to show you various different address field layouts and how we can make the software work with them. First of all we need to activate the address lookup software so obviously we need to have installed it on our computer. Then the user usually moves to the first line of the address holds down the Windows key and presses S to activate the search dialog box. To access the definitions which dictate how the program will interact with other applications we select options and access settings. When first opened it will ask you for the password which you allocated when you first opened the account with Simply Postcode. So I just enter my password in here and it's just warning me there that there is a quicker way to go to the definitions which we'll see later. And now we're on our definition screen. Effectively this screen has 20 layouts down the left hand side that we can use to define our own individual definitions. Simply select on them and set up the right hand side of the screen which I'll show you in later demonstrations. As we say, our software works off the shelf with many different applications. And if you wish, you can actually access those definitions and copy them to an individual setting here by simply pressing this button, scrolling down, you can see here this stage line 50 for instance, and pressing copy. That then renames it and you're ready to alter that definition if you wish to do so. The first step in making Simply Postcode Lookup software work with your favourite application is for it to detect that application and then know what information to write where. In this small excerpt I'm going to explain how it detects the application you're working with. For a start I'm in a very small example database, Microsoft Access, and you can see here I have a contact window. This contact window is where I want the address lines to be filled in. So what I need the program to do is to detect the fact we're running Microsoft Access and we're actually on the contact window. Let me just explain how a lot of Windows applications work. They have a main window, which we can see here has the title Microsoft Access, and then they may have child windows, which we can see here as Mr. Jimmy Jones colon contact. I've just written Mr. Jimmy Jones in there to show you that a lot of applications may have a variable um, title but usually they have a common word such as colon contact or new contact, edit contact, add contact etc. So you may need to set up many definitions, one for edit and one for add new contact. So let's see how we detect the fact we're using this specific window as I said, this is a child window, and by child window I mean that if I minimise the application you can see it's disappeared down to the taskbar and comes back when I maximise it again. Some applications have child windows, some just have one simple window. It depends. So let's have a look how we can set up our definition to detect this specific form. I'm going to activate it in the first line of the address using the Windows S key. And the first thing we'll notice is it's come up, but in the title bar it says Simply Postcode Lookup Service for Anything. It always says anything if it cannot understand what application we're currently interfacing with. So let's press the definitions button, which was also visible if anything, i.e. it doesn't know what application it's trying to talk to. So we click on that, and we can see on the left hand side here we have the 20 definitions we can set up. So first thing I could do is name my definition. So I've called it an example, which now means that when I move away we've got the name on the left hand side. So when the application, uh, i.e. simply postcode, was activated, it looked through all the windows currently running on your system and it's listed all that information in this box down here. At the top is the current application that is running, which in our case is Microsoft Access. 
Next, it lists the last couple of applications that are running. So it says Microsoft Document 1 is open, which is Word and Access. Also, the child window, which currently has focus, the title of that is Mr. Jimmy Jones, colon, contact. So that's representing the window that we're really interested in. Then the next section is any text it could suck off that window. So you may have a title in that window, etc., that you can use to identify this particular application as the one that you want to write to. It's important to hone in on this criteria so it selects the correct definitions out of all the definitions it knows about. You can see here we have A, B, C and D at the start. This is just here to help you with the criteria which we'll see in a second. So let's set the criteria up. Firstly, we have this box here which we have three options. We can say the application, the current application, title starts with, or the application title contains, or applications running must contain. Basically, you should try and select the top one, application starts with. But, for instance, if my application didn't always start with Microsoft Access, and started with a contact name, very similar to we already have on our contacts window, we may want title contains. So let's say application starts with, and I'm going to copy that using control C, which it says in this title bar here to help you, and control V to paste it. So now what I'm doing is, when Simply Postcode Address Software is activated, it searches all its definitions based on the information it's sucked from all the windows, and matches them off to find the, criteria, to find the definitions of how to write the address back. So we've started our first bit, we now know it's Microsoft Access. But what if we had several different forms within our Access project? Say Edit Contact, Edit Supplier, Edit Order Details, etc. Then we would need extra criteria. And of course we might be using several different Access applications. So in this case, it would be preferential if we started to hone in on the child window. Now our child window is a little bit complex because the first portion of it actually varies. It could be Jimmy Jones now, it could be Sam Smith next one, it could be Ruth Clancy followed by Jimmy Jones. So we need to pick this portion out here which we always know will say colon contact. So I'm going to copy that and add that to my next criteria box. So now I want to say the focus, the child window that has focus will contain colon contact. As I said, there's a letter at the start here, so that's C. If I look in here, I know that all these C options here are related to the focus of the child window. So let's select it must contain. So now what we've said is the application window must start with Microsoft Access and the child window must contain colon contact. I think that'll do a pretty good job. So let's try that out. I'm just going to close that and let's reactivate the search box in our contact window. And now you can see it says example 1 down here up, up on the title bar. Also the definition button has been hidden because it knows the definition go back to the definitions, we can click on options and access settings, but if you'd like a faster way, just double click on this grey portion here and you'll find the button reappears, and then we can go in and hone in on the settings. These are the playback settings which we cover on later examples. But you can see there how important it is to get this criteria correct. In this example, we're going to interface with this new contact form, which basically consists of separate, separate fields for each line of the address. To do so, I'm going to move to the first line of the address, activate the Simply Postcode Address Lookup window, holding down the Windows key and pressing S. Now I'm going to go to Options and Access Settings. I've already labelled it Example 1, which we did earlier. 
So let's move on to actually defining what will be written back to the application. If I select button 1 playback, and note we have the option for two buttons, so in some applications you may have two slightly different address formats on one window, so we can cater for that. I can put here a button description. Now this is going to appear on the screen we'll see later. Now for instance what I can do here is I can actually play back keystrokes and if you want to find out more you can press this help button here they're all listed but effectively you'll see here it says playback order and these are the possible address fields we bring back from our database notice we didn't have a company field on the form and we'll see that in a later example for a start we've got home shift end and delete being played which effectively if there's anything in a field in majority of applications home will go to the start of the field shift to the end shift plus end will select and then delete will remove the contents of that field so that may be handy to to remove the contents of the field um, to start with also many applications as you tab through highlight the contents of the field so effectively it will overwrite as it tabs through anyway so you do not necessarily need that on every individual line we've also got a country field down here we can see there that's tab order 7 but we don't have a country for, uh, field on our form so I'll deselect that and we do use tab to move between fields so basically what we're going to say is when activated to write an address back select the contents write the contents of line 1 back and then tab and then line 2 and then line 3 4 5 6 etc and of course we could change the order in which we do these and we can concatenate them which we'll see in later examples so let's close that down and try it out so here I am again in the first line of the address and I activate it first thing to note is it says simply postcode lookup service for example one so there it's telling you which definition it's already using now I can do a postcode lookup if I wish but if I'm on a credit based system and I don't want to waste my credits if I type in ZZ99 you'll see it comes back with demonstration data so let's just double click on there and you can see it's written back the information we expected in the correct places so that was easy this example is slightly different because we actually have a company field name here so we want the company name to be written back in in the previous example we didn't have this so I'm just going to alter those definitions activate the box and press the definitions button obviously all I need to do is actually select one in there and tab out and you can see it's changed all the order and basically I need to pop that into that first line so it selects and removes everything and obviously we need tab to go between the fields so now if we close that and we activate again so then we filled in the addresses This example is slightly different from the previous in the way we have two fields between the company and the first line of the address. Now that doesn't sound much and of course we could add tabs to skip through those two fields but again we'd have to go back to them. And in certain applications like Sage Act we may find that the company field is several fields away from the first line of the address. So that would be a shame if we couldn't do anything with the company address because we do actually have it as part of our database so let's just see how we can handle that let's go back into the definitions and go back to the playback and what I'm going to do is actually turn off that company field so let's just delete that out okay so now we've told it not to write that back let's just see what happens now we need to watch the top right hand side of the screen oh, 
see there it says use control V to paste the company field in it says that briefly for a few seconds so the user actually has now the company name on the clipboard and if we hold control and V down which is a standard Windows control code we can actually paste that information into anywhere so therefore we've actually added the company name without too much difficulty if that is an undesirable function we can actually suppress that functionality if we go back and into the other page we can say do not offer the company name in clipboard in which case it will turn it off in this example we're going to write our address back to three fields firstly the company name secondly the address and then a postcode so a majority of the address is actually going to be in this field here and we're pressing return there to create new lines and tab key to move between fields so let's blank down what I've just written in there and move to the first line so now I'm going to activate a note I'm activating I'm activating in the company field so let's activate and let's go to the settings so now we want to turn on back on the company field which we've just done and of course we want it to delete anything that's in there to start with and of course to move between fields we need tab pressing now we said in the actual memo field we press enter to create a new line so let's select enter on all those fields apart from the last one because the last field to be written needs to then move on to the postcode field on their form so let's close that and try that out so again now I've actually made it so I have to be in the company address so let's press P so let's look up an address and let's fire that back into the application now that's interesting you can see it's left a gap because line 3 of the address was blank well, of course in a real scenario we wouldn't really want it to do that so let's reactivate it and let's make a slight change these tick boxes on the right here allow you to say ignore this field if it contains nothing so if I do that for those last three fields and town and county should always contain something definitely county does so let's go close now let's try it let's do the same search and write the same address back and now we can see there was no separated line within the address this example is a slight variation of the previous example we still have three fields to fill in company name the address and postcode but this time we want the address to appear with commas between the uh, fields so let's set that up let's go to the first line of the address and activate the search double click down here to make the defs button available and go into the definitions because we've already built up our application criteria so we needn't go in and edit that the first field was our company field and we've already got um, the definitions in there to select what's in there and delete it followed by a tab to move to the next line so we want line 1 to appear with a comma after it so here we can select comma indeed we can select that for all the other fields if we remember there's always a county returned so the county will spring it off into the postcode field and on of course we only want it to write line 1, 2 and 3 in the town if it contains data else we would end up with empty commas in the address line so I tick all those four boxes on the right hand side now let's try it out good so that's for a residential address now let's try one with a commercial address and there we have it all filled in nicely
Now I'm just going to take you through some sundry kind of settings within that uh, window we've been using. Let's just go back into it. On that other tab, and of course this is applicable to any of the definitions you set up, you can do various things, like I could say this definition always wants to post everything back in uppercase. Indeed I can set the speed it writes back. If I'm having problems, if I select debug, it writes things back really, really slowly. So I can see what keystrokes I'm playing back. Normally it says use clipboard, in which case what it does is it um, pastes each, all the data into each field. But it is possible for it to write into each individual key back. It's really a case of if you have problems with a definition, it's worth maybe trying the use each key and use each key slower. Some applications um, don't handle the key presses so fast as others. So it's a kind of uh, a bit of experimentation to find the right setting. But usually use clipboard works fine. Also, when the program writes back, it actually physically clicks on the application to make it have focus again. This option here stops that happening, which may or may not be required. Again, it's only used if this problem's writing back. Do not offer clipboard, we explained in, uh, I think it was example two, where it comes up with a big screen saying the company name's been put on the clipboard. If you don't wish that to happen for this individual definition, you can untick here. Also, you can override the UK name. We haven't actually written back any country names, but you can, if you don't like United Kingdom or whatever's the default, then you could put UK in there for this one definition. We also have some other definitions here in that we can set the UK name globally, and we can also capitalize en masse any one of the address fields. And also, by default, it's going to write back England, Scotland, Wales, or United Kingdom, uh, instead of United Kingdom. So we untick that, and it will write back United Kingdom. The others allow us to get definitions from our server, and delete all the user-defined definitions. Or we can select everything in uppercase, which again is a global setting for the whole application. So, like I say, it's just a case of really trying various settings out and experimenting and testing thoroughly.